Hello everyone and welcome to my newbie guide for Last Epoch's Factions, the Marketplace and the Circle of Fortune. I'm your host, Colors Fate. The Marketplace and the Circle of Fortune offer players a way to obtain better equipment, but they do it in vastly different ways. These factions are mutually exclusive, meaning if the character joins one, that character cannot join the other. However, you can switch factions at any point, and later in the guide I'll explain how to do that and what the ramifications are. First, a quick caveat about modes. In offline mode, only the Circle of Fortune is available. If you visit the marketplace, you will receive a message that the stalls are not available in offline mode. This makes sense if you think about it because how can you trade with other players if you're offline? Thus, for offline mode characters only, the Circle of Fortune is a viable option. In online mode, you will first encounter these factions when you reach Act 9 of the story, arrive in the upper district of Majelka, and talk to Zarek. Subsequent online characters will meet faction representatives much earlier in the story at the Keeper's Camp in the Divine Era. And I highly recommend joining a faction at that point because the earlier you can start advancing your reputation with a faction the better. As far as equipment goes, each faction provides players with a unique way to obtain loot and each faction's equipment is denoted with a custom icon in the bottom right hand corner of this description. Players can view their current faction status at any time by pressing the Y key. Both factions operate on favor and reputation. Favor is gained by slaying monsters and completing quests. Favor is the currency by which players will raise their faction reputation. And reputation is displayed along a horizontal bar. There are multiple levels, each resulting in better rewards. The more reputation a player has, the better loot they'll have access to. Now before we go any further, I need to explain how favor and reputation works across characters on an account. Every character on your account can belong to one faction or the other, but not both. These factions are mutually exclusive. However, if you have multiple characters belonging to the same faction, those characters will share faction reputation and favor. For instance, I have a mage, a rogue, and a sentinel all as online characters in the current cycle. My blademaster mage belongs to the merchant guild, while my rogue and sentinel belong to the circle of fortune. When my rogue kills monsters, she earns favor, and that favor is added to a pool that is shared between her and the sentinel. On one hand, this is good, because it means you won't have to work reputation up twice for both characters, as they'll be working together to raise the same faction bar. On the other hand, it means both characters must share their favor. So if one character needs to spend some, that's less favor for the other character to spend. So it's a bit of a double-edged sword, and it's something I want everyone to be aware of so they aren't surprised when they see the numbers in action. Also, while I'm discussing favor and reputation, let me explain how to leave a faction, because this also affects favor and reputation. As I mentioned, these factions are mutually exclusive. However, a character is free to quit one faction and join the other at any time. But this is not a free action and comes with some drawbacks. For starters, remember that each piece of gear from a faction is marked with that faction's icon. If a character is wearing any equipment from their current faction, they will be asked to remove that equipment before leaving that faction. Once the character switches factions, they will no longer be able to equip that other faction's gear. Then there's the matter of favor. Recall that favor is a pool and any online characters belonging to the same faction contribute to the same pool of favor. Well, if any character elects to leave that faction, all the favor is lost. The entire pool goes to zero. The only thing that remains unaffected is reputation. Even if all your characters leave a faction, the reputation stays locked where it is. So if you elect to have a character rejoin that faction, the reputation will be in the same place as when everyone left it. I hope that makes sense, because it's a really important thing to understand and it can be shocking when switching factions to see all your favor disappear. Now, let's discuss the factions individually starting with the marketplace. The marketplace is located in the bazaar near Majelka and has a stall for every type of equipment in the game. Browse a vendor and you'll notice that every single piece of gear has a reputation level associated with it. Think of reputation as purchasing power. The higher your reputation, the better equipment you can buy. In order to raise reputation, a player needs to buy and sell equipment. Both acts, buying and selling, will raise reputation. However, both options also require favor. In order to sell an item, a player needs to spend a certain amount of favor. This value is inherent in the item being sold and is based on its tier, features, and forging potential. In short, it's a fixed value calculated by the game. When listing an item for sale, a player must spend whatever favor is specified for that item. In addition, the player then sets a gold value that they want in return for the sale. If the item sells, the player will earn the gold and a certain amount of reputation. 
Thus, selling items is one way in which reputation goes up, allowing access to better gear. But here is also where it gets a little funky. To explain this next part, I want you to imagine the distribution of players amid the reputation. A higher reputation is harder to earn, so it makes sense that the majority of the players are toward the bottom half of the reputation spectrum. Clearly everyone wants higher reputation, and since higher quality items earn more reputation per sale, it makes sense that players would want to price their high-end items in such a way that they sell. Thus, you will see loads and loads of higher-end items for sale for zero gold. This is because the player selling the item is far more interested in acquiring the reputation than the gold. Conversely, since the bulk of the player base is at the lower reputation levels, this is where most items get bought and sold, and thus this is where players will experience dramatically inflated prices. It's common to find level 14 daggers priced for 100,000 gold pieces, for instance. All of this is to say buyers and sellers need to be aware of the market and the relative values of goods if they want to make progress towards a higher reputation. If a player wants to earn reputation by selling items, then they need to sell lower tier items because mathematically speaking, there will be more demand because there are more potential buyers with lower reputation. So to sum up selling, you need to spend favor to list an item and provide a gold value. When it sells, you earn the gold and reputation. The other way to earn reputation in the marketplace is through buying. Purchasing items requires favor, just like selling. To buy any given item, you first need a certain amount of favor as well as enough gold. And you also need enough reputation to be able to access that item. Again, higher tiered items are locked behind high reputation. In the beginning, when your reputation is low, you'll only have the ability to purchase lower tier items, like rare or magic items, but each purchase will help raise your reputation level. With the search filters, you can find items with specific affixes that are tailored for your build. Keep a sharp eye on forge potential. The more forge potential an item has, the more you'll be able to improve it to fit your build. Unless an item is absolutely perfect for your build, I'd advise against purchasing anything with a forge potential of zero. It means the selling player has already tapped it out and you can't modify it at all. Finally, the marketplace is, to my way of thinking, the best way to equip alternate characters. Since all online characters share the same pool of gold and affix shards, it's easy to go shopping with our main character and find gear for our alts. You'll have the widest selection of gear and a deep filter for searching, allowing you to get the best gear for your alts at all level ranges. Of course, remember, the lower tier an item is probably the more expensive it's going to be. If all your alts are members of the market faction, then everyone is earning favor together when killing monsters and completing quests, which is another bonus to all of those characters being a member of the marketplace. The other faction in the game is the Circle of Fortune, which is aimed at players who prefer to earn their gear by playing the game instead of buying and selling from other players in the marketplace. Just like the marketplace, the Circle of Fortune operates on favor and reputation. Favor is earned the same way it is in the marketplace, kill monsters and complete quests. When it comes to reputation, however, the Circle of Fortune operates quite differently. The Circle of Fortune trades in prophecies. Players can acquire a great number of these, and what a prophecy does is reward players with specific kinds of loot based on completing the prophecy's objective. In short, these are like targeted mini-quests. Around the upper floor of the observatory are four telescopes. These show prophecies for various equipment types. Each prophecy lists a set of conditions and the rewards the player will receive for completing those conditions. In order to purchase a prophecy, a player needs to spend favor. Every time a player spends favor, they earn reputation. A small amount of reputation is also earned for slaying monsters, but it's rather insignificant compared to purchasing prophecies. The prophecies shown in a telescope are randomly generated. Often, many of the prophecies will have conditions that make them less than desirable for certain players at certain points in the game. Thankfully, there are lenses the player can purchase that will refine the prophecy search. Lenses work by either improving the chance of certain kinds of rewards or eliminating certain conditions when prophecies are generated. Lenses are a one-time purchase. In the lower left-hand corner of a telescope, you'll see three slots for lenses. At low reputation, a player can only use one lens, but at higher reputation levels, the player can employ up to three lenses. To view prophecies, a player presses the Alt key by default, which causes the prophecies to display in the telescope. However, even if a player inserts a lens before pressing the Alt key, the lens will have no effect. In order for a lens to affect the prophecies in a telescope, the player must spend favor and re-roll the prophecies 
prophecies. Then, and only then, will the lens work. Prophecies can make many parts of the game more fun because they reward additional loot when achieving the objectives. And with the right prophecies, that loot can be really good. So there you have it, the marketplace and the circle of fortune. Two factions that can help players obtain better gear. Which one you choose is up to you. My only suggestion is to put some thought into it before making a choice because switching is not a painless process. In order to create this video, for instance, and verify how the system worked, I had to abandon the marketplace faction on my main character. Since nearly every piece of gear they were wearing came from the marketplace, I had to abandon all of that equipment and wear scrub gear so I could learn how the circle of fortune worked. So my recommendation to you is to figure out how you want to play the game and then choose the best faction for the job. If you enjoy playing a lot of different classes and want to have a lot of alternate characters, the marketplace is probably the best way to equip them all. But if you just want to play the game and get more loot while playing and more high quality loot, then the Circle of Fortune is the way to go. I myself have really enjoyed playing with the Circle of Fortune. It's a lot of fun to hit those targeted objectives and watch a whole bunch of extra loot drop. Whatever you choose, I hope you have fun. If you enjoyed this video and found it useful, please give it a like, leave a comment below, and consider subscribing to my channel. Until next time, I'm Colors Fade, and happy gaming.